Hi there, and welcome to Orderly Wind. Today's topic is my top five wineries in Paso Robles on the central coast of California. Paso Robles was my first wine tasting trip back in 2016. Even if it's further from Los Angeles, it's a great wine region, and there you can find wines different from the ones you can find in Sonoma, Napa, or Santa Barbara. Paso Robles is California's fastest growing viticultural area, and since 2000, the number of wineries went from 50 to more than 200 wineries today, driven by a growth in ownership by small, uh, small family-owned operations. Today, Paso Robles vine acreage is slightly m smaller than Napa Valley, so it's a pretty decent sized wine region. Paso Robles is known for its warm climates, and with warm climates, they are really famous for uh, their Zinfandel production, Cabernet Sauvignon, but overall for their Rhone style uh, wines, both red wine and white wines. So, Zinfandel was uh, the first grape planted in commercially viable size in Paso Robles back in 1914. Uh, the Cabernet Sauvignon and Bordeaux style uh, blend, or grape for Bordeaux style blend, represent about 55% of all grapes planted in Paso Robles. And for Rhone style wine, uh, Paso owes the largest acreage of Syrah, Viognier, and Roussan in California. Paso Robles is divided in two subregions. Uh, the so-called west side and east side, and the 101 is the divider. Personally, I prefer the wineries on the west side, for instance, in the Adelaida district, as the vines benefit from altitude and also a cooling effect from the Pacific Ocean. After this introduction to the Paso Robles wine region, here is my top five wineries in Paso Robles. I should mention that I visited not as many wineries uh, in Paso Robles as I did in Santa Barbara, so my knowledge of wineries is more limited. Number one, Alto Ranch. Alto Ranch uh, started back in 2000, so as many wineries in Paso Robles, a fairly young winery. It uh, is a biggish winery with more than 200 acres of vineyards, has a large selection of wines, and their tasting room has a great view uh, to their, their vineyard. They have a really good road style wines. For instance, their GSM for Grenache Run Mourvert brand blend is called Côte de Paso and is a reference to the Côte du Rhone which is the Rhone style blend in France. They also make Bordeaux style wine and they have a very good jammy Cabernet Sauvignon called The Ancestor. Their other selection of wines, so their current release is about 10 wines, they also have a good rosé and good white grapes, for instance, Grenache, Blanc and Picpou, which are typical um, grapes from the south of France, not only the Rhone Valley, but the south of France. Number two, Tablas Creek. Uh, for Alto Ranch, though the number one, I really like their red blends. And Tablas Creek is really good for white road style blend. Tablas Creek uh, was a pioneer back in the 70s and 80s of the Rhone movement in California. Back in the 60s, the Haas family in California started to partner with an uh, old French winemaking family from Chateauneuf-du-Pape, the Perrin, who has the Beau Castel property in Chateauneuf-du-Pape. Given the similarities between Paso Robles and the Rhone Valley, the two families decided to partner and the Haas family started to import vine cuttings and built a grape grapevine winery here in California. Given that it's so cumbersome and long to import vines because of all the regulations, almost all vines from the Rhone Valley region from France here in California are from the Talas Creek Nursery. 
the winery started in 1989, so it's an older winery than other wineries in Paso, and they make great wine from all the Rhone white grapes uh, from Viognier, Marsan, Roussan, and Grenache Blanc. Their big seller is Côte de Tablas, and it's very good white made in the Rhone style. Number three, Clos Solène. It's a winery that has been started by a Frenchman, Guillaume Fabre, who is coming from a family of winemaker from south of France. So he worked in south of France, but he also worked in Bordeaux and for a period of time worked and was a winemaker at L'Aventure in Paso. In 2007, he started his own label, so Clos Solène, and at first he was sourcing his grapes, but now he has vineyards, a winery, and a tasting room. As it's a boutique winery, uh, the prices are quite high, but his wines are really good, made with minimal intervention. It's some kind of a pure French style. Uh, as Tablas, they have a great one style whites, uh, for instance, Hommage Blanc. Number four, Chronic Cellar. Fun Labels, Serious Wines is their motto. They started back in 2004 and they don't grow their own grapes, so they source them locally. It's a fun testing room with funky host. They have great visual and there is Infandel blend. Purple Paradise is really nice and affordable as they sell it for 16 to $18. Number five, Calcaris. I never visited this winery, but I tried two of their Rhone style blends, their Syrah and their GSM called Tres Violet, Tres or Très Violet in France. The name of the wine uh, is a reference to the three grapes of the GSM blend and Violet is because of the deep purple color of the wine. It's another young winery as they started in 2000 on the west side of Paso. So theoretically, I should be done with my top five, but I will throw a sixth winery here uh, because I never visited Calcaris, so it's kind of to compensate for that fact. Uh, so the sixth winery is Thatcher. Uh, I like them for two reasons. First, their logo is a grasshopper and it's a really good logo. I really like it and so I have uh, many of their wine glasses. And secondly, uh, it's a young winery. They started back in 2008 uh, on a ranch property. So the family who owned the property uh, bought a ranch and started to make wine, which is often the case in California. Uh, out there in Paso, they're mostly producing Zinfandel and Rolstein blend. And their, one of their blend, Controlled Cows, is a really good blend and it's not a GSM. They use Grenache, Zinfandel and Mourvedre. And so there is no Syrah in this blend. Before concluding this video, I also probably should mention uh, Justin, which one of the really famous winery in Paso Robles. Uh, Justin didn't make it to my top six because for a few reasons. Uh, one, it's a big winery, part of a big commercial group. And I really like to learn about the story uh, of smaller family or, or companies or, or, or help companies uh, that are not as big as uh, Justin. Uh, their wines can be really good though, but personally I find that their wine is a little, little too high in alcohol for me. And secondly, uh, they have good Bordeaux blend, but I find that their good Bordeaux blend's uh, price is way too high. Their former winemaker, Kevin Sass, uh, went to Alter Ranch back in 2011. And so if you, you like the former or the old style of Justin, don't hesitate to try Alter Ranch as you can get uh, two bottles from the price of one Justin bottle. That's it for my top five wineries in Paso Robles. I hope you enjoyed it. As usual, you can uh, leave me a comment. Let me know what is your favorite winery, except especially uh, Paso Robles winery or California winery. What is your favorite wine? 
you can also subscribe to this channel. And if you're interested in learning more about wine, uh, taking uh, classes, attending wine tasting, or try to build a wine collection, you can check my Facebook page, Orderly Wine. As usual, enjoy the wines, but drink responsibly. Cheers.